Is it just like to say thanks for the opportunity to talk to people about my condition because I don't talk about it very often. Um, functional neurological disorder is uh, a condition that can affect people in a whole variety of ways. So um, it's a brain body connection problem. So it can manifest in tremors, tics, seizures, uh, paralysis. Um, various different sensory issues, uh, and it, it's the it's it's the idea of interoception as well, um, which is the sensing of your body. So if your stomach is is sends a signal that it's hungry, then your brain knows and it it activates it to work. Um, so you can get things like um, gastroparesis where your stomach doesn't empty because it's just not doing anything. Uh, you can get gust, gut dysmotility. This, it's a whole range of different things. Like I say, it affects different people in different ways. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share my story about how it affects me personally and the way that uh, I've been dealt with in really good ways and and really bad ways actually within the NHS um, and then afterwards it would be really good to have your questions and you know any ideas for improvements. My story started in uh, 2014 um, when actually at the time I was I was a postman um, and I had a really active job obviously I was I was walking around a lot I was carrying heavy weights um, and I was a little bit exhausted a lot, but I just put it down to being a postman, you know, it's a bit of a um, tiring job. Um, so when I started having, uh, I had palpitations and I started getting a little bit of leg weakness, so there were things that I sort of realised so that something wasn't right. Um, and I, I started having very slight hand tremors um, and it was just this utter feeling of exhaustion um, so I started dropping my hours a little bit because I wasn't coping very well with the rounds um, and then when I was sorting the mail in the office um, I uh, suddenly had this feeling that I couldn't stand up anymore and it was really frightening. Um, I collapsed and I couldn't move um, at all. Um, I couldn't even move my, my tongue. Um, so luckily there was somebody there to raise the alarm and to get an ambulance to come and come and get me. Um, and when I got to the hospital, um, they just didn't know what was wrong. You know, they assumed that there was that I maybe had an infection or that there was there was some reason why I was effectively passed out but not unconscious if that makes sense my, my body had shut down entirely um, but I could still hear and I could still um, I could still see if I could actually open my eyes a little bit then I could I still had my senses but I didn't have the ability to do anything um, so it was really frightening because I um, I had had the uh, I just didn't know what was what was happening to me, um, and I couldn't communicate with anyone because I couldn't talk. Um, so when I was in the hospital, uh, I, I I just thought, well, I'm I'm just going to try and uh, wiggle my toes, wiggle my fingers, try and get moving, and. And, and and that actually worked, you know, it's like I, I managed to get myself out of it gradually and I, I was then just very, very weak, like I'd run a marathon, but actually I was, I sort of felt, I felt okay again. After a few hours where I hadn't had an attack like that, because I, I had this repeatedly over several hours, um, so I'd go into this paralysis and then I'd come out of it again. Um, and then I hadn't had an attack for about five hours maybe and uh, I was sitting in a chair by, by the side of the bed 
just waiting to get discharged and uh, I um, I, I was just looking at my phone and I suddenly realised that I couldn't move my hand and then I realised that I couldn't move my arm and then I realised that I couldn't hold my head up um, and I couldn't move anything so what, what happened was that my head slumped down and my chin was on my chest and uh, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't move I, just, I was just slumped in the chair and I just... Um, it was it was it began it became really painful because i was i was in that same position uh for about three hours and uh it was you know it was humiliating it was excruciating and um during that time there was a there was a handover in in the nursing team and uh two nurses came in who obviously didn't know who I was and the fact that I'd been sitting up smiling at people um, just a few minutes before that and they they had a conversation at the end of the bed um, where one of them was saying that they just assumed I was a coma patient or that um, I was sitting in a chair so it was a bit of an unusual thing for them to say but they just thought I was like that I was just like that all the time or that I had maybe a mental health issue or um and they just left me there um I was just I was just left in that chair for three hours and uh it was it was horrendous um because from my point of view I was thinking well before that I was incredibly active I went rock climbing I did all sorts of things and then suddenly um yeah thank you um, yeah, I, suddenly it was that I I, um, I was just kind of ignored um, in 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 that position, um, and you know I consider myself a strong strong-willed person, but I I must have cried for the last hour that I was like that, and uh, it, I cried so much that it soaked my hospital gown, um, and. Uh, you know, I'm not ashamed to admit it now, but you know, at the time, it, it was, yeah, it was, it was a source of shame for me that I, 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 I that that happened really. Um, so, eventually, um, without without any um, help of any kind, I uh, I managed to do the started to wiggle my toes, wiggle my fingers. I managed to get my arm muscles moving again, uh, took some time and then when the second that I could, I managed to lift my own head because I could, my neck muscles weren't working yet. Um, I managed to lift my own head and put it on the back of the chair and uh, then uh, I effectively went into the paralysis again but in a more comfortable position. Um, so. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, it was a, it was a relief because I thought, well, okay, nobody's helping me, and that's fine. I'm just gonna just gonna sit here, and then it had obviously been some time without any food or drink, but I really, really needed the toilet. And when you can't move any of your muscles, you can't stop yourself from going to the toilet. So that was the next thing that was incredibly embarrassing for me. Um, and again, I can I can talk about it now, but mortifying at the time, you know, being a, a relatively young, healthy guy, <laughs> you know, being in that position. Um, so, oh, and during that time as well, um, a lady came in with my meal and uh, put it on the table and said, here's your food. Yeah, there you go. Just left again. Um, and then... <laughs> Um, a little while later, she came and took the food away again because I hadn't eaten it. She's like, oh, I don't know why you didn't eat that. <laughs> um, so obviously, I'm talking that, you know, this is this is the bad section. This is that a lot of things went a bit wrong here, you know. Um, so during during the two days while I was suffering these attacks, I was, I was discharged uh, twice. Um, and after discharge both times i had another attack where i couldn't move so obviously i couldn't be discharged because um i couldn't physically
leave the hospital, <laughs> you know, without going out on a stretcher. So, um, yeah, it was it was just a ridiculous situation to me because, um, and I hadn't been assessed by a neurologist, which I, I, I requested when I was awake and, you know, a, able to communicate. Um, and um, there was one really lovely nurse who who listened to me and said you know that she she believed that what i was experiencing was was real um and she wrote a little note on the on the on the board behind me to say that um that i'm usually normal friendly and conscious um so it's so obviously um yeah, sorry, my little girl's just going Banana! Oh, banana, yeah, sorry, yes. I'm just going to open a banana. Just one banana. Second. This is the banana. Here we go. Are you going, please? <laughs> <laughs> banana. Big girl. Here we go. 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 Yeah, she's just having a banana. Yeah. Right, um... I don't know how to get the banana you, out. Oh, okay, I'll just get you a banana. It's stuck. Oh, it's, it, it's you know, the joys of um, doing things online. Um, so, um, yeah, so anyway, I'll go back to the, the... There was a nurse who was really attentive and she was very good. And she, um, yeah, so she wrote on the board behind me that um, effectively this man is usually conscious if he appears not conscious then make sure that you speak to him because he can hear you um and that made made a big difference you know like you know the other nurses started to really um acknowledge that and uh you know started to uh to sort of start treating me more like a a, a normal person in a way um so yeah, on day three, I was um, I was laying in bed, unable to move, uh, when a neurologist finally came to see me. Um, she's uh, she's three and a half, so she, um, <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so uh, when the neurologist came to see me, I was just at the. Um, finger wiggling stage so I couldn't talk yet and I couldn't um, I couldn't really do very much at all I could hardly open my eyes but I was really focused on wiggling my fingers so um, the the neurologist um, sat down and asked me what was what was the matter what was wrong and I couldn't respond because I was unable to talk yet um, and I was just, I managed to murmur a little bit um, to try and tell her that I was trying to talk, that I was listening, you know, but it just came out as a groan and, you know, so she... Um, Daddy, my hair is all dirty. No, that's okay, just go and give her a wash one key. Okay, just go and give her a wash in the bathroom. Good girl. Um, yeah, so um, she, she, got, she got more and more irate with me that I wasn't responding and bearing in mind that there was actually the note behind me saying this man is usually conscious please be be friendly <laughs> kind of thing um so then she yeah she just continued asking me these questions and then um to sort of test um if I was faking it I guess um she she took my limp hand and just lifted it above my face and then let go and it slapped me in the face with, with such force that it actually it actually bent my it bent my glasses um that i was wearing um yeah it was it was <laughs> um yeah and no, you know and I, I i just felt that you know i obviously wasn't i wasn't receiving the respect that i felt that i deserved and I, I was, I, I, it was 2014, um, just answering that question. Um, yeah, so she, um, 
yeah, she obviously wasn't uh, kind of clued in on what was happening with me, and uh, she made an assumption that I um, that, that that I wanted attention or you know that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, she 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 actually told me I was rude for ignoring her, um, and I was so angry. Um, but I I I, I couldn't um, I couldn't communicate even that I was angry. Um, I couldn't communicate anything. Um, so I desperately tried to speed up the process of wiggling my fingers, trying to get my arms moving. I did all of this in front of her, and I, I was sweating. I was I was trying to do something that was incredibly hard work to to get out of um, but I knew that I'd done it repeatedly before so I knew I could do it um, so when I reached the point where I could speak um, the, the, you know I, I tried to rein, to rein in any anger I felt and I just said um, have you got any ideas as to what might be causing this um, and the first thing she asked me was, uh, was, I, was I stressed? And I said, yes. I said, yes, I am, I am stressed. Um, but the thing that's causing the stress is the, is the, is the paralysis. Now, I, 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 didn't have, I didn't have something that was stressing me to that degree that I felt that it was a, um, a sort of mental health manifestation you know I, I i could rationalize that um so she told me that all of my tests have come back had come back fine um and that there was nothing wrong with me uh so that that should be reassuring and uh she said that they really they really needed the bed so uh that i should go home as soon as possible and uh, she'd already asked me to be discharged so the paperwork would be there soon um so there was no room for discussion and there was no um you know i i i felt that i couldn't i couldn't i didn't have the strength to argue um so i just said okay <laughs> um i really wanted to go home to be honest because um it felt safer than than being in in the hospital not being understood as to what was happening and i didn't even know what was wrong with me i just you know, I, I when I was when I was able to um, for long enough, I uh, I got picked up and I went home. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. During the um, yeah, it was very scary, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, the scariest thing I've ever I've ever been through. Um, and uh, yeah, I spent. I spent six months at home falling in and out of complete paralysis um, and I didn't want to go back into hospital so I just rode it out, couldn't work, I was off work ill with it and uh, I was struggling to eat, drink, go to the toilet, you know I mean thinking back I mean I would have I would have tried a lot harder to get a diagnosis at the time but I um, I I kind of became convinced that maybe it was just my my mental health, and that I was struggling with that, and I didn't even know. Um, but yeah, so, so 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 gradually the attacks got um, my airway. Um, yes, it um, it did affect my airway because um, it it depended what position I was in. Um, all of my automatic processes continued, so I could still, I could still breathe. Um, you know, um, I, my my heart was still beating. You know, I, I had all the essential functions still working. Okay. Oh, can you be quiet, please, my kid. Okay, I'm just still doing it. Thank you. Good girl. Good girl. Um, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, and I mean, um, gradually the attacks got got further apart, and uh, they eventually stopped. Um, you know, and I couldn't tell you why. I didn't necessarily do anything to make it stop. All I did was just every single time I went into that 
into that state, I immediately tried to get out of it again. <laughs> and and that's that's what I lived by. I was like, if it happens, just keep keep doing it. Yeah, no explanation. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, um, and it, it was a few years later, you know, I'd, I'd almost, you know, put that out of my mind, really. It, it was in the rearview mirror. Um, when did it stop? It was about... Um, it, it was it was after about six months, um, so yeah, it, it, it was it was just during during that time it, it uh, gradually gradually improved. Um, so and it yeah it was probably within about two weeks it, it started to gradually get better. You know towards the end of that six months basically, yeah. So it was a, it was a long time to to cope with it and and you know my my I mean. You know, I mean, my my wife was amazing. I mean, she was, you know, without without her helping me, I don't know what I would have done really. If I'd have been on my own, I mean, I would have just been laying there for hours, not being able to eat, drink, or do anything. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really bear thinking about. But um, a few years a few years later, um, so this this wasn't actually that long ago. This was only three years ago. I suddenly started getting a. A terrible headache and it was very localized um, at the front on the right um, and it was, it was like a migraine but I'd never had a migraine before I just just happened to never have them and uh, and I got this awful feeling of like vertigo I felt like the room was spinning and I didn't feel right at all so like I went I went to lay down and um, when I uh, <laughs> like as soon as I laid down and I rested, I realised that I couldn't move my legs, um, and I, I I I sort of tried to lift my arm to feel my legs to see what was happening, and I realised that my right arm couldn't move and my left arm was still perfectly normal, um, and the right side of my face. Um, started to droop um, and at the time we assumed and that we thought I, it was probably a stroke um, because of the uh, because of the symptoms you know the the, the, the searing headache the um, you know it, it, it was very much mimicking a stroke um, but, it, but again this was uh, the uh, neurological disorder um, but still at the time I didn't know so so when um, when I went to the hospital um, so yeah you know the paramedics took me in there and they um, uh, oh and yeah j just an aside as well is how I how I actually got out of the house was that um, the the paramedics couldn't get their their, their stretcher up the uh, up the stairs because we had these baby gates on and uh you know like my wife couldn't find anything to take the baby gates off so they just sort of asked me if could i maybe get myself downstairs kind of thing i was like yes i can do this i've only got one functioning arm but i'm gonna scoot across the floor and i'm gonna get down the stairs on my own on my bum that'll be fine um and uh i have another condition which is a connective tissue disorder called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome which means that I get dislocations easily um, so I, yeah I, I know right um, the uh, so the um, the problem that I had then was that uh, I was I was pushing so hard with my arm that uh, um, I dislocated both hips and uh, when I was trying to kind of get them back in place and I was leaning back on my arm I dislocated my shoulder as well so I was <laughs> I, I was a bit like a big jellyfish I, it was bad um, so at that point uh, it didn't really matter yeah uh, well yeah it was it was quite painful yeah um, except for my shoulder because I, I, don't, I don't even feel it when it dislocates it just does it and uh, you know it happens so often it doesn't even hurt anymore but yeah um so yeah they then took the baby gates off and they 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 got the stretcher 
because you know it just wasn't happening was it um <laughs> so yeah at the hospital they they assumed that i'd uh, that i'd had a stroke um just as we assumed and uh they 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 very quickly actually got me the, the right test to check if i'd had a stroke or not um i, I remember talking to one a and e doctor who um in his best sort of uh bedside manner voice um said that i should prepare myself for the worst um because from his perspective it didn't look good i didn't even know what that meant but i just thought yeah you could be right i don't know if i'm ever going to move again on that on you know w whether this is just that that's it kind of thing um but but from my perspective i was thinking it's very it was very similar a very similar feeling to what had happened years ago um so i um yeah i, I was actually uh, you know I, I just started to think well actually i, I can get out of this it'll be, it'll be okay you know because because I, I got out of full paralysis before and this was only partial paralysis so you know bound to be a little bit easier um so I started this process of trying to wiggle my fingers and toes, but this time the paralysis just uh, persisted. Um, so for 24 hours, I I just couldn't move those parts of my body. It was just it was just impossible. Um, so this time, um, when I got assessed by a neurologist, um, and this was a different neurologist um, this time. Um, and she did uh she did tests specifically for functional neurological disorder um which involved uh you know she 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 took my she took my reflexes and actually a, a weird manifestation is that you have you have reflexes but you don't have any control yeah it's it's just the, like the mind body connection and, and she um she explained that uh, the that that those tests were indicative of of the condition, and uh, she nearly made me cry, but in a good way because she was telling me that it wasn't all in my head. That it's a real condition, that it can happen to anyone, uh, regardless of stress or anxiety. Although once it happens, stress and anxiety can exacerbate it. So she was saying, you're not, it's not a mental health problem. It's a physical problem, you know, and, and it, it, it was, yeah, it was reassuring. Yeah, it was, it was very reassuring. Um, Cause finally I, I, it made sense what she was saying. And, you know, she gave me things that I could read. Yeah, coordination issues as well, yeah. So I was finally believed and uh, I had some, some clear instructions from the doctor and then the physio and they basically said you need to get moving as soon as you can because otherwise this paralysis could become permanent because of the nature of the condition and uh, I I thought back to my attitude when it when I'd had the full paralysis before and I, I, I was desperate to get moving again and I think that's what got me through having bouts and bouts of it all those years ago. So, um, and then um, I just basically had the Rocky theme playing in my head. I was like, I am going to get moving and I need to do this within seven days or this could be, uh, elements of this could become permanent. So I just had to really really focus and do all of the physio moves to um to try and get that you know yeah <laughs> yeah the to, to, to get them the the brain body connection um restored um for each part of my body um and also speech and language therapy um because again like you know the nurses were really good at I I isolating what um what would help so they said actually we'll yeah we'll 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 uh we'll arrange for that we'll get we'll talk to the doctor and arrange for speech and language because um one issue was that because that side of my body was um oh she's got fnd as well yeah um 
yeah it's um it's like uh yeah that 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 sort of side of my body was 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 paralyzed so my um my vocal cord on that side was uh was paralyzed as well so it meant that i couldn't sort of stop fluid going down my throat um so uh they they came up with you know thickened fluid which was easier to swallow it meant that i wasn't going to aspirate as easily uh, and then I had IV fluids when I couldn't, when I couldn't swallow at all. Um, so I, I just felt that everything was done right. You know, this this visit was it was spot on. And um, you know, the physio team were great as well. They gave me um, they gave me a Zimmer frame to try and get walking, and Daddy, within seven can days I, I was. Have the spare bubble. Uh, yeah, I'll find one in a minute. Thank you. All right, you go back there for a minute. There you go. Yeah, so I was having thick and fluid, and I was having uh, pureed foods, um, and uh, the the nursing team were were really great. Um, you know, they they sort of helped me help me go to the toilet. They helped me to keep my my dignity, um, making sure I was covered up when I. I only had one arm to actually do anything with. Um, one of the male nurses um, helped me to to shower. Like he actually, you know, lifted me into the shower. Um, and uh, yeah, so within that within that seven days, I managed to get walking with a Zimmer frame. And it was the, it, it, it's the hardest work I've ever done. I. I've never done anything that hard in my life. Um, it felt like running marathons repeatedly every day, um, but I was determined, and I, you know, it was. Um, it my, oh, what's that? My speech. Um, yeah, my speech was um, affected quite a lot because I, I, I was very hoarse and I couldn't get any volume, um, and it, it still affects me a little bit now. Like I can't. Yeah, I was slurring a lot as well, um, because on that side I still, you know, my 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 lip was uh, was drooping, um, as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, people could could understand me, but they 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 had to take the time to. Yeah, it was frustrating. Yeah, yeah, they um yeah they, yeah they had to just take the time to uh, to kind of get quite close close up to me to to actually hear me, um, and. Uh, yeah, I, I remember showing a, a couple of the nurses just like a, a picture of what I was like normally. You know, I, I just had it on the lock screen on my phone, and um, it was just me playing with my little girl. Um, and they were like, "Oh, okay, so you're not like this." Yeah, you know, this is this is new sort of thing. And I was like, "Well, yeah, I'm, you know, I I usually have full functionality when when people first when people first meet a patient." Um, you know, like after a handover or when they've just been admitted to hospital, it, it's easy to kind of make these assumptions about someone, you know, because like I say, it was this assumption that maybe I had, you know, that it was a, a sort of mental health, like a, a manifestation. It was, you know, like the idea of um, what uh, functional neurological disorder used to be called was conversion disorder, which was the idea that your emotions and that if you don't deal with your emotions then it can shut your body down in some way um, and going back even further before that it was it was called hysteria so literally just somebody had lost it you know no ex no explanation why just um you know <laughs> so obviously the understanding of it has gradually changed over time and uh, it, it's really good to see that there is more of an understanding now. In my case, I've got a I've got a pretty good sense of humour. You know, I'm I'm pretty positive. I love my life. You know, with my wife and daughter and my job and you know, I I I really I'm a very happy person in in general. Um, but when I have one of these attacks, I I always feel that. Um, I could be misunderstood. So, so my answer to that 
which is just my own strategy is to that I, I i've written a card that i've laminated that's got a picture of me in my normal state and an explanation um that the, yeah, exactly. It's very vulnerable if you can't if you can't move and you can't communicate. Then it, it, it's the worst feeling in the world, you know. Um, so what I do with that card is that I, I I actually I leave it on my chest so that everybody can see it and they don't have to look behind me. They actually they can look just below where my face is, you know. That there it is, the information um, and. I just want to finish with what that card says. Um, so it says, I have functional neurological disorder. If I appear unconscious, I'm still aware and I can still hear you. Please talk to me, show me respect and help me to maintain my dignity. I look forward to meeting you when I can move again. Thank you. I noticed someone's question about my mobility there as well. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I, I basically reached the stage in, in the last two years, I, I've, um, I've started using a, um, I started using a manual wheelchair. Um, Part, partly because of this sort of leg weakness, the tiredness that comes with that. And um, it kind of relates to my connective tissue disorder as well. So I get lots of hip pain. Um, so it's just easier to use a wheelchair um, a, most of the time when I'm out and about. Um, and then I started using a, an electric wheelchair um, because I got tendonitis in my shoulder, so it was just really painful to push myself around. Um, so I've kind of got the option of both. Um, yeah, so it was actually after I'd had um, I'd had an operation on my shoulder. I'd had an arthroscopy to remove some a calcium deposit, and um, when I was, you know, I'd, I'd sort of I'd, I'd come out of the anaesthetic, and I um, I was. I, yeah, I, I sort of realised that my legs were a little bit weak, and I thought, "Oh, that's 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 not good." You know, I'm I'm not I'm not quite feeling right. And when the when, you know they sort of put it down to that I'd had maybe a bit of an adverse reaction to the anaesthetic, which is probably still true. Yeah, I sort of realised that actually I I couldn't move my legs um, very much. You know, I, I I had a little bit of control, but I had no strength in them so I could kind of wiggle my feet but I couldn't really move my legs very much and uh, I um, I just assumed that it was just the anaesthetic wearing off um, but but five hours later um, I still couldn't move them and it was a um, it was a surgical ward that actually it closed at I think six o'clock that it was and uh, one of the nurses came in and said, okay, so somebody coming to pick you up. I was like, um, kind of can't really move out the bed. Um, sorry, I don't know what to do about this. I am hoping to get this moving again. You know, I was showing I was trying to do my exercises, but I just literally couldn't move my, you know, couldn't move my legs very much. So, um, and uh, yeah, like, like Suzanne said, you know, my, my experience of that, um, attempted discharge was um, was was pretty awful because um, basically the nurse um, said that she would um, she would call my wife for me to come and collect me and uh, I said well you know is it possible for me to talk to her because you know I, I, my phone had run out of battery and you know I, I just wanted to communicate and uh, this nurse went and phoned my wife and spoke to her and said, oh, if for some reason he doesn't want to leave. I don't, I don't know why that is, but yeah, can you come and get him? Come and get him before six, please, because I want to go home. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, my wife just said, yeah, it was really unprofessional. Um, yeah, so so my wife said, um, has, he, has he been to the toilet? 
has he had anything to eat? And and the nurse said, oh yeah, he's been to the he's been to the bathroom. He's um, he's he, he's had he's had something to eat. Um, yeah, yeah, he's he's absolutely fine. She she was lying basically. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't get out of bed. So, you know, so so so, so basically this this same nurse. I mean, she she you know instead of. Um, listening to me she she sort of doubled down and was like right you're going so come on get dressed um <laughs> and i was like okay i'm willing to try i will i will do my best you know so um i managed to get my legs over the side of the bed and um she was like you know going through a bag getting my underwear and stuff and you know she like put the just wanted me to do it and I was like um I think I need a hand because I I just can't do it on my own you know a bit embarrassing but I kind of need a hand please um and she was like oh right okay and she just like um pulled my underwear up my legs and um and, and like I couldn't get it I couldn't get it on properly so I was just exposed I was like you, you know you pulled my gown off and I'm just exposed on the bed, you know. Um, and she, um, and, and then she said, "Oh, come on, get them, get those on. You know, you, you, you're flushing everyone. That's just indecent, isn't it? Oh dear. Oh, what, what's what's wrong with you? You know." <laughs> I was like, I was like um, "Okay, yeah." And, uh, so I, I, um, I've been resisting the urge to. Um, you know, I thought I'm just going to let this play out a little bit because I I didn't want her to be aware that actually I know the procedures <laughs> as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, so I said, OK, I'd like to talk to the nurse in charge. And um, I feel that this is an unsafe discharge. So that's what needs to happen go and get her now please um and she did very begrudgingly and the nurse in charge came and she was absolutely horrified yeah by what i said she was like that is that's disgraceful she said i am going to follow this up she said you are entitled to make a formal complaint you um should not be treated that way which i obviously knew but I was just astounded that this nurse was doing that, you know. Um, so basically the nurse in charge said, don't worry, this ward is closing, but you can move to the ward next door and you can just be wheeled through on the bed and be looked after, which is what's meant to happen. So she said, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry that this has not happened by now. So yeah, that that was yeah, because I yeah I, I remember it, I remember at the time I was I was thinking you know there are so many amazing nursing students who would never do that and I uh, I I have faith in all of you that you would not treat somebody in that way that you would not. Um, you know, show such a lack of respect and um, not respect somebody's dignity. Um, I I have to have that faith that all of you can be like the good, the really good nurses that, uh, you know. It's my birthday, is it? Oh, <laughs> I didn't realize it was my birthday, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Day. Yeah, apparently it's my birthday. It's not really my birthday. It is your it's birthday. It's my pretend birthday, apparently. There, there, there are so many neurological conditions, like yeah, like including epilepsy, that um, can be misunderstood by by people. Um, you know, especially if um, if it's undiagnosed. Um, yet, you know, if, if if they haven't actually received the proper diagnosis yet, then it's 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 a hard journey. Um, if you sort of met with misunderstanding and um, e even even ridicule, you know, it's um, it, it, it's it's rare, you know, because I want to say it is very rare, you know, because I've, I've been to hospital so many times, 
with it. And um, I'm I'm kind of telling you the, the the you know the very best of it and the very worst, you know. But 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 there were other times where it was just in between. So I think that just um, well, it's kind of like you know by by doing things like this, just just kind of raising the the awareness um, as as part of training, or you know if, if nurses are already working, just having that. Um, continuing learning about these different conditions um because even someone who's who's in a coma um or appears to be in a coma may be able to hear you um and that's it's just so important how 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 nurses act around patients and not just sort of talking about them in front of them and things like that um and um yeah, it, it, it's really just sort of helping somebody to maintain their dignity um, when it's when it's difficult to really because if if they can't respond to you, then you don't know you know you sort of don't know um, how they're affected by it. But it's that it's it's assuming, I think that 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 person can hear you, that they do understand, and that they. Um, they have feelings, you know, they have feelings about uh, what, what's happening to them. Um, can you do my socks? Oh, thanks. What are you taking your socks off for? In terms of an electronic version of the card, I mean, I've, I've got, um, I have got an electronic version that I, I tend to print out and take it with me. Um, you know, so I, I have it with me all the time. And then usually it gets lost when I'm at hospital. So I have an electronic version so I can print out another one and make sure I've always got one with me. I think for, um, you know, or, yeah, like maybe having like a soundboard of some kind. Um, I suppose it's um, in certain circumstances, like if, you know, when I could move one arm, that, that would be brilliant, you know, because I could press it myself and say, I need the toilet, you know, so I, I think that that's really good. And then... Um, I think it's just if I've got complete paralysis that <laughs> um, that's the that's the issue is that I wouldn't be able to I wouldn't be able to press it if if if, if there were different things then I could utilise certain different things at different times so like you say that might be a useful thing if I'm not able to speak but I can move my arm so it's a good it's a good idea In, even if even if I'm not able to speak I can you know th th there's always something i can do to communicate even if it's just a little moan or a grunt or something you know so effectively it's a way to say that one <laughs> yeah. um so, so yeah definitely i think that it would be nice i think if there's that if there's that facility and that people could use it and that they have that awareness that that might be the thing that can help them communicate with a the patient then i think that that would be a really good um, tool in your belt really because then it's not reliant on the patient bringing, a, bringing anything themselves you know it's very it's very difficult because I mean I, I um, you know you know I mean some of the some of the best nurses that I've interacted with as a patient have um, have had a lot of, of other patients to deal with you know and it's um, it, it is it's very difficult it's like spinning plates having an increased awareness means that those needs would, would get met more often um because you know no one's perfect and no one can do you know no one's a superhero um although a lot of nurses are like superheroes i think but um you know it's it, it's just about improving outcomes i think rather than you know we're never going to reach perfection because it's just it's about dealing with things at the time which i realize um i think it's just when it goes beyond a certain point i think three hours was was too much <laughs> <laughs> to be to be left in a chair slumped with my head like that you know i think that that's there were failings there i really appreciate everyone listening as well thank you yeah